Today on Maker's Muse, we're taking a look at the Z-Morph, a beast of a machine that can do a lot more than just 3D printing. But does it match the incredible price tag it comes with? Let's find out. So this is the Zmorph 2.0 SX from Poland and it's built like an absolute tank. Made from a triangulated frame of laser cut aluminium, vacuum formed PET and 3D printed components, this machine is rigid. Probably the most rigid machine I've ever tested. But I can't really demonstrate that because if I shake it, the whole table will shake rather than the machine. It's absolutely insanely overbuilt. It doesn't skimp on the motion components either, running heavy duty V-rails, linear rods, and a coarse double timing belt setup on the Y-axis. The print volume is around 250 by 235 by 165 millimeters, which is fairly substantial, but on the small side for a machine of this overall size, the front and back covers are attached using magnets and can easily lift up and click in place or even be removed entirely just by lifting the magnets off should you want to get more or less airflow into the print chamber while the machine's running. The printing surface is a heated glass plate that has no issues getting to a high temperature quickly, although I do tend to use an adhesive solution to ensure my prints did stick and didn't come loose. In my case, I used Magigoo, which is purpose made for this application, and it worked a treat. The extruders take 1.75 millimeter filament and you can try any filament you like on the market, but there's no guarantee they will all work. There is a load of SmartSense machine, actually far too many to go into detail in one video, but to summarize, the Zmorph is not just a 3D printer, but instead this thing is the ultimate all-in-one prototyping center. It has a modular design, allowing you to attach different tool heads beyond just 3D printing. You have a CNC or milling tool head, laser, or even paste extrusion is possible in the same machine. However, this video will just cover my experiences with the 3D printing aspects of the, this machine using the two tool heads it comes with. And let me know in the comments if you'd like to see future videos covering the additional tool heads. So 3D printing on the Zmorph. Let's start with one of my first complaints. How are you supposed to hold the spools? This particular unit has these tiny 3D printed rollers that supposedly hold the edges of a spool in place. Talk about an afterthought, guys. They don't work at all well in my experience and I actually resorted to using these 3D printed external spool holders or even a filament box with a pen stuck through it was a better solution. To be fair though, it looks like Zmorph has updated the design of this machine to have a laser cut aluminium spool holder above the machine and that's a far better solution in my honest opinion. My tests were done using eSun brand PLA as well as Melt Ink brand PLA slash PHA which I've had great success on using on multiple machines in the past. The interface on the Zmorph is a nice color touch panel and it's responsive and mostly intuitive to use. Leveling the bed is a manual process, however it is assisted with a probe that simply clicks into place where you can also attach fans to improve print cooling. It will run through its sequence and suggest a certain degree of turning each screw head, which is a little bit trial and error, but it will get you dialed in fairly quickly. To start with, I chucked in some of the demo files using the single extruder tool head in pink eSun PLA, and the results were okay. There's a little bit of stringing issues as well as some files like this little wolf having problems with the infill at the top not being that great. And also I was actually getting some really poor layer adhesion issues. For example, with this one, sorry Wolfie, you know, very poor layer adhesion at the stock inbuilt temperatures for PLA. And as we know, Isan PLA is pretty bog standard in terms of its temperatures. So yeah, that was fun. Time to throw some of my own files at their software. Because of its complexity, the Zmorph is designed to work with their own software called Voxelizer, which is both super cool and also sadly disappointing at the same time. Let me explain. In order for the Zmorph to work with so many different tool heads, a custom solution was needed, as well as a way to break files down into a usable medium between the different tool heads. The solution that they came up with was to voxelize your STL files, which are then post-processed as needed. It's a little bit like this. You export an STL file out of your design software, then you voxelize it and then post-process into G-code. What is voxelizing? Well, it's basically turning it into lots of 3D cubes, which are all nested together to form the 3D shape. Voxelization is actually an old idea that is actually now starting to be implemented in a few design programs, but it's pretty cool to see Zmorph actually trying it out in their software. 
but it's also a little bit like taking a photocopy of a photocopy. You start off with mathematically driven curves in your CAD software, export to triangles in your STL, and then you turn it into 3D cubes using voxelization, and you do lose detail. I did definitely notice that. And I partially blame this process for why the Zmorph totally failed at printing my torture lattice cube with their own software, without it catching on the extruder every time and breaking. And it is worth mentioning that you can print tethered to voxelizer to the Zmorph machine. However, I also noticed you could also send it G-code to kick off a print without it even waiting to be preheated, it would just start going. Oh, and also while the voxelizer software was fired up on my machine, Simplify 3D couldn't start up, which I thought was pretty strange. So at this point, I was pretty stuck. Before moving on to the Dual Pro Extruder, I really wanted to just try and get good quality prints out of the Zmorph. So I threw together a Simplify 3D profile. It was pretty simple really, and wow. The difference pretty much fixed most of the issues, mostly. Here's my lattice cube that was sliced in Simplify 3D, and yes, it's not the best one I've ever done, but it did finish compared to the other one I tried in Voxelizer that didn't. And this is the most complicated print I attempted. The amazing March hair drawn by Tanya up on my mini factory. Support material pulled away beautifully and the print looks awesome even at 0.2 millimeter layers. So I didn't actually have an end script programmed here so it did stop on the ear. But apart from that, it was pretty darn impressive. So the machine can get good quality prints if you're using a different slicer, it seems. However, I can't discount Voxelizer completely quite yet because it does have a few other tricks up its sleeve such as this. This is the Dual Pro Extruder. It takes two 1.75 millimeter filaments and combines them into a single 0.4 millimeter nozzle. It's, this thing is awesome. It effectively allows full color blending and Voxelizer has a super awesome image mapping feature built in, which I must admit works pretty well. At this time, you seem to be stuck with their preset object forms with a few customization sliders, but you can wrap any pitch you like around these objects, especially, uh, especially like this one, which is my Patreon banner wrapped around a 20 sided uh, cylinder, I suppose. Now you do need to purge the nozzle between each color or color combination. So for example, with this one on the default, I guess, width of the purge, it's pretty much solid. Um, <laughs> and it took a really long time to print. So it's a pretty cool party trick, but I can't see it being used very often for practical prints. I also really wanted to try multi-color prints, but couldn't work out an easy way to accurately align multiple STL files to their original origins in Voxelizer. So once again, I went to Simplify 3D. So I did try this dual color Benchy. Unfortunately, my purge tower uh, fell over and it all went uh, to hell in a handbasket at that point. But it was doing a fairly admirable job, but there is stringing issues, which you're gonna need to definitely get with this style of color mixing extruder. So it does work, although it could use more tweaking. And if you're going from black to another color, you'll need a, need a huge purge column to purge out that color. And also it's not gonna be 100% uh, effective because it is a single nozzle mixing dual colors. You will get a bit of bleed, especially from the darker color as you transfer across. You could also use another material for support, but you're most likely going to come across the same contamination issues I encountered with printing the dual color Benchy here. This machine is also one of the few on the market to have encoder-driven feedback on the motors. Something I feel would be more critical for milling rather than 3D printing. I wasn't really able to quantitatively test it. I did try in a stream to throw it off its alignment and it didn't really like me fiddling with it. So that's the last I kind of played with it. So what are my thoughts on this hugely impressive looking machine? Well, to do as much as you can do, it has to make compromises. To be capable of milling materials, it has to have heavier duty belts than a regular 3D printer would have. The tool head is heavier duty and therefore has higher mass. This means your print speeds and print quality does suffer as a result. The machine also has quirks that can make it frustrating to use at times. For example, this is the selection method for printing off the SD card. Choose your own files or the demo ones, then select your materials and set them up to preheat. Then you can print right? Well, no. You have to wait till the machine preheats before you can actually commence the print. There's no preheat built-in cycle that will start the print automatically. You have to wait for it. And if you miss the preheat cycle, well, it's gonna cool down and you have to do it all over again. This was hugely inconvenient for me running between machines because I'd often miss the cycle and have to do it all over again, wasting loads of time. So I'm sure there may be a way to do this with some sort of G-code thing, but it really wasn't obvious in my use of this machine. 
So if you only ever intend to 3D print, the Zedmorph probably isn't the best solution. The price is very high compared to other similar machine build volume machines, and it lacks the ease of use of many of its contenders. However, if you want the capability to CNC mill, laser etch or more, well, I honestly can't name another machine on this planet that allows you to do what the Zedmorph can do. It's almost like a niche within a niche machine. It could be perfect for, for example, a space restricted makerspace, school or university. However, I do need to put the additional tool heads to the test. So let me know in the comments what you'd like to see next tested. The milling head, laser, or even the wacky paste extruder. Let me know and I'll make it priority. Huge thanks to Dion from the 3D printer for sending me across this Zedmorph to test out and apologies for the delay in getting this review out. And I'll put a link to his store in the video description. And full disclaimer, Dion was kind enough to send this machine to loan for free for the purpose of testing. However, I will be sending it back and no money has changed hands. Be sure to subscribe so you don't miss any future 3D printing tips, tricks and reviews here on Makers Muse and a big thanks to all my Patreons for helping support the channel. I really do appreciate it. I look forward to seeing you again very shortly here on Makers Muse. Catch you later guys. Bye. He has placed satellites into water. He is actually...